So what is Amazing Remelt? Well, it's kind of like a gelatin one part mold. Okay, so here's a picture of the container. Here's what it looks like inside. It's pretty solid, but the way that you get it to liquefy is in your microwave. So you're gonna take it, you're gonna put it in, and you're gonna keep hitting it for 30 second intervals on high until it becomes a liquid. Make sure that you use hand protection because of safety. And see, now we've got a liquid and we're able to pour it. Here is the mold that I made. I took a glue gun and basically uh, sealed this down. And you wanna seal down whatever it is that you're molding as well so it doesn't float to the top. Hold it by both sides so you don't burn yourself. You pour it in, try to get rid of as many bubbles as you can, and you wait until it hits this consistency. If you've got this wobbly stuff like still in here, nope, not ready yet. To demold it, you're gonna pull the cardboard off of the bottom, just like this. Now you can use a uh, cardboard piece around the outside. You can make your own box. It really doesn't matter. That's a, uh, a cookie cutter and that was the easiest thing for me. And then you're slowly gonna pull this off of the surrounding cardboard. It's gonna come right off of the thing that you're molding. And there you go, there's a mold. And to get that uh, cardboard piece off, all you do is run it underwater. It'll just like pop right off of there. And the one thing that I wanna show you is that the company website says that you can use this with the amazing casting resin. And uh, I put that piece of card under there because I knew it was gonna happen. And if you look at this, yeah, there's bubbles in there and it's not set up at all. And then if I turn this kind of to the side, you're gonna be able to see that it's bulging out of the bottom. Now, the big problem with this is that you can't put anything in here that goes over 140 degrees. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna toss this piece over here, this other piece that I cut off, I'll be able to put back in and remelt and use again. Now, for this piece, I'm going to be using something that I suspend from the top here. I'm gonna check and make sure this measuring spoon is gonna fit into the mold, and this is just a plastic cup that I've glued down. So again, it doesn't have to be any kind of a fancy uh, surrounding material, just something that you can take off. I tend to use metal as much as I can just because it's reusable, but this is fine. Uh, I'm using a silicone uh, sleeve crossbar, and then you're gonna pour the rest of the material up over to where you're covering this completely. Now, if you spill this, it's not a problem because as soon as it cools, it's just gonna pop right off. You wanna make sure you don't get it on carpet or anything like that, but otherwise you should be fine. So we're gonna take this off. This is set up, it's probably been about mm, 20 minutes. If you want this to set up faster, you can put it in your fridge. And then I'm just gonna slice down the side of this with my pair of scissors. And the nice thing about this is that it is reusable. If you make a mistake, you just throw it back in the container, remelt, repour, and you're good to go. But again, anything over 140 degrees is not going to work in this mold. So this is great for ice and low melt chocolate, you know, things of that nature. But if your resin has any kind of a heat to it when it combines or a chemical reaction, you're not gonna wanna use this at all. So taken around the outside, I'm gonna pop off the bottom. And then again, the nice thing about this is whatever you don't absolutely have to have on your mold, you can cut off and remelt. I'm going to trim around the bottom just so it's easier for it to stand up on its own. There we go. And as you can see, one of the other nice things about this is you can see through the mold making material to make sure that you got the impression that you want. Now, when you surround an object like this, you're going to have to make some cut lines to be able to get this out and then pour stuff into the inside. Now you wanna make sure you don't go all the way down on your sides, but you can see it's made a really nice impression on the inside. I'm gonna pop that, there we go, pop that right out. And then when I, see this, this matches up so well, yay, so exciting. All right, uh, <laughs> sorry, I just love looking at it. So I've put a rubber band, uh, hair band around the top of this and it's actually full of water. Now, if you're wondering, is it gonna to stay together when you cut down the sides? Yes, see, look at all the water that was in there, yay! So, and this is the inside of the impression, so you can see how well it molded 
uh, around the inside of the spoon. And while it's a little bit flexible, it's not super flexible. But again, just pop it in here when you're done with it and remold all of it and you are good to go. Um, anything, again, that has that cardboard on it, you wet it and it will just roll right off. You want to make sure you don't get any of the cardboard in with the rest of your mold making material because it'll cross contaminate it and you don't want that. The other thing you might consider is heating this up again before trying to get the lid on it because if you have too much stuff in here it's gonna pop right back up again. Yeah. Now this is a unique molding material in that it has a lot of pros and a lot of cons. On the pro side, we have, it is non-toxic, it's food safe, it's environmentally friendly, it's easy to reuse, and it's a one part mold, so really, this is all you need. On the con side, it is a big initial investment. You're gonna spend hopefully between 20 and $25, but some places even have it listed for 35. It is also, very hard to find locally. You might be able to find it at Hobby Lobby, but other than that, you're probably gonna find it online. While this is really great for food applications, anything that has any kind of heat, bad news. The heat application for this maxes out at about 140 degrees, so it's not even like you could use this with hot glue or certain epoxies that give off heat. Just make sure if you use it for something that is not food, you don't reuse that for food later on because it's not going to be food safe anymore. Please subscribe because that would be awesome. Please join our community. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them. And I guess that's it for this week. All right, guys, I'll see you next week. Bye.